Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Well, it looks like we're only a few hours away from AMD's Ryzen 5000 series launch, and I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am. However, there has been some concern and confusion within the PC hardware community as to whether we can expect a new series of chipset motherboards released alongside the Ryzen 5000 series. Will there be new X670 and B650 motherboards coming to the market? Well, if you were to ask me that question, I'm probably going to say no, we will not. And I firmly believe that there won't be any new motherboards coming, or at the very least, any new chipsets coming for the foreseeable future. For starters, usually as we approach the launch of a new series of CPUs, either from Intel or AMD, we often see many leaks from your usual suspects on various tech forums, retailers, and board partners in regards to a new series of chipsets and motherboards. However, with the Zen 3 launch just a few hours away, we haven't actually seen any information whatsoever in regards to a new chipset, say an X670 chipset or B650 chipset. Back in December of 2018, on a Taiwanese forum, there were some images leaked there from a presentation held by Gigabyte. During that presentation, they had shared some information, including a roadmap, which had X570 clearly listed. That was about six months prior to AMD announcing Zen 2-based Ryzen 3000 processors, which had X570 motherboards released alongside them. We've also often seen board partners register their new upcoming motherboards with the Eurasian Economic Commission, who are a huge regulatory body for economical activities done in places like Armenia and Kazakhstan. In April of 2019, Komachi had released some information of Gigabyte registering new boards like the X570 Oris Master that I have running in my system with the EEC. Speaking of the X570 Oris Master, I had actually managed to get my hands on this board several days prior to the launch of the Ryzen 3000 series processors here in Canada, which was on the 7th of July. Having some connections within the supply chain has its perks, so I was able to see what kind of inventory we were getting here and how much of it would be available at our local computer hardware stores here in the GTA. However, getting in touch with some of my contacts there and also just in general talking to inventory managers at retailers here, none of them have seen any news or have reported any new shipments regarding new X670 SKUs. Nothing. Where they would usually get stock for these kinds of products well in advance. And I know that the processors haven't launched yet and also that they haven't even announced a release date of when they'll hit store shelves. Regardless, information from board partners regarding shipments for newer chipset boards will often operate independently and many outlets will have information regarding shipments what kinds of SKUs they'll be getting, and approximately what kind of time frame for release there is. The fact that there hasn't really been any information surrounding new chipset boards really only means that AMD doesn't plan to release any new X670 motherboards or B650 boards at all. Now, there are several reasons as to why they would decide to do this. For starters, even if they were to release a new series of motherboards, there really wouldn't be any groundbreaking new features that would make them an appealing upgrade over older series chipset boards. I mean, X570 and even B550 motherboards already come with PCI Express 4.0, which isn't even fully utilized by the fastest consumer graphics cards on the market. Well, there are some Gen 4 NVMe SSDs that do take advantage of the higher bandwidth, but I mean, for 99% of consumers out there, they just don't make sense simply because they don't provide any additional benefits in most day-to-day -day programs. They certainly don't provide any performance benefits in gaming, let alone a few seconds in loading time. They're much more expensive as well, so you might as well just get a fast Gen 3 NVMe like the Western Digital Black or Samsung 970 EVO, which are already blazing fast, cost-effective, and will fulfill your needs. PCI Express 5.0 isn't even ready yet and will be coming next year. The same goes for DDR5. The other thing I'll mention since DDR5 was brought up is that often when we've gone through the transition of a new medium of storage for volatile memory, the first generation of products are sometimes even worse than the higher end sticks from the previous gen. Sure, bandwidth wise, they'll be faster, but they'll have really bad latency. I remember when X99 was released and people were using 2666 MHz DDR4 RAM with some absurd timings, but that's because it was still fresh, but man was it also very expensive. So features like PCI Express 5.0 and DDR5, I'm perfectly fine with them not being implemented right now, and especially for a mainstream platform that's not even HEDT, where 
economical and cost-effective products are a focus. As of now, X570 and B550 boards already come loaded with plenty of features to hold over many consumers for years to come. PCIe 4.0 is just fine, DDR4 still has plenty of headroom, and the only reason why you often don't see discussions surrounding kits with 4000 MHz plus uh, memory speeds is because currently Ryzen 3000 series CPUs have trouble going above 3800 MHz while keeping a 1 to 1 ratio with the Infinity Fabric Clock to alleviate latency. But we'll see if Ryzen 5000 changes that. And I have a good feeling it will. Many of the higher end boards also come with Wi-Fi 6, which is still an up and coming method of wireless connectivity. There just isn't a huge incentive and doesn't make sense for AMD to bring out a new chipset when it'll essentially be a copy of the 500 series. What I'll also add is that at the time, it definitely seemed like AMD had bolstered up features and told manufacturers to improve build quality for the X570 motherboards because they had probably had support for Zen 3 already in mind. I mean, when you go back and take a look at some of the previous generation motherboards for Zen 1 or Zen Plus for the Ryzen 1000 or 2000 series respectively, yeah, sure, the boards were capable and would do the job, but I felt like they were often not given the same quality treatment from board partners as they did with Intel boards. However, with X570, I felt like that all changed and we've seen so many premium boards come out for this mainstream platform. Rightfully so, Ryzen 3000 was a fantastic generation and I'll still be recommending them even when Ryzen 5000 comes out. Since we're on the topic of Zen 1 and Zen Plus and the older generations, some of you might be questioning this decision as AMD essentially rebranded the 300 series chipsets to the 400 series chipsets, and you're definitely right in thinking that. This was the case, and many B450 boards were essentially just B350 boards rebranded. We did see some new additions for the X470 boards, but ultimately, I felt like they were just the same boards feature set-wise and everything as the X370 boards were. The reason AMD still went ahead Ahead and did this instead of just keeping the x370 line is because first gen ryzen motherboards were just riddled with problems i'm sure a lot of you guys remember and there were reports all over tech outlets and users complaining on forums and it definitely stained the ryzen 1000 launch and the series there were many issues with users complaining with one of the biggest issues being memory overclocking and simply just being able to set XMP hardly ever worked for a lot of people on Ryzen 1000, where people couldn't even get past the BIOS with XMP on. It was a disaster. I actually remember reading about that and had ordered myself some new Samsung BDI RAM, as that was really the only set of memory that would work correctly out of the box, and it did. I was simply able to set XMP on my X370 Gaming 5, and it ran without any problems. But AMD and the board partners definitely felt like it would be worth it to release a new series of boards with an updated chipset that should be free of all those problems that plagued the first generation. There was an incentive there for them to do that, and I'm glad they did do it to help minimize and alleviate platform problems. And overall, Zen Plus was received much better than Zen 1 was. When, and with less problems reported. Now, I remember there were some issues surrounding Zen 2, but that was mostly related to the processors themselves and not the motherboards such as the boosting issues. With the Nagisa update, those problems were fixed shortly after. Now, I know some of you guys might be wondering, well, if AMD aren't going to release new chipsets, what about compatibility and how will I know if my Ryzen 5000 CPU is going to work with my x570 board that i just bought it could have been sitting in inventory for a while with an older bios well i'm sure amd has accounted for that and they will probably be working with big retail partners to ensure that most boards in their inventory are flashed and compatible with the newer series but moving forward from the manufacturers gigabyte or asus or whoever will probably have a sticker certifying the board to work out of the box with the new ryzen 5000 series zen 3 cpus so i wouldn't stress too hard about that i'm sure the board will come flashed with an updated Agiza out of the factory. Plus, AMD have in the past sent out boot kits to users so that they can update their boards. Along with that, many boards also have features like BIOS flashback, where you don't even need the processor in the board. You simply need to supply it with power, load the BIOS update on a USB, press the BIOS flash button, and the board will be flashed. I actually had to do that with my X570 Unify so that it could work with my 3800 XT because it had an older BIOS that was released earlier than the Matisse refresh CPUs. So it's a very clutch feature, and I honestly honestly think that it should be a standard feature on every motherboard. It just makes life so much easier. So those were just some of the reasons as to why I believe there won't be any new 600 series chipset motherboards released alongside the upcoming Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 series CPUs. And 
AMD will probably be riding out their current 500 series chipset boards, probably until 2021 when Zen 4 comes out and we have PCIe 5.0 and DDR5 on the market. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.